Hello! In this video, we will discuss moments and centers of mass. We'll do this across two videos. In the first video, we'll talk about discrete systems of point masses. In the second video, we'll talk about how to apply that to address more challenging questions when we've got masses across a continuum or, or an area. We'd like to lead up to be able to address this type of question. Suppose we have a flat metal object which has as its boundaries y equals negative x squared plus 4 and y equals 1 half x squared minus 2. The object has density delta as a function of x and y, which equals the absolute value of x grams per square centimeter. And we wish to balance this object on the tip of a pencil so that the object doesn't spin, twist, turn, or tilt. At which point should we balance the object? So we have the object here. We want to balance the object at its center of mass, the point at which all of its mass is concentrated if the mass is considered to be at a single point. Many problems in physics can be simplified by replacing an object by a point mass at its center of mass. So we want to be able to work up to be able to solve this type of problem. We're going to first consider something that's much simpler. To find this object's center of mass, we will take a somewhat sophisticated system and change it to one we can solve rather simply, and we will use partition and sum as well as some common sense. To consider a simpler case, first suppose two persons of different sizes are standing on a thin metal rod situated on a fulcrum, also known as a teeter-totter. So here we have a large person standing further from the fulcrum and the smaller person standing close to the fulcrum. And this is going to result in a turning, in this case a turning counterclockwise where the, the larger person is going to cause the teeter-totter to, to tilt downward. Since the person having greater mass is further from the fulcrum, there will be a tendency for the rod to rotate counterclockwise about the fulcrum. A measure of the tendency of a system to rotate about a point is called the torque. If we want the system to be balanced, we could do one of a few things. We could move the fulcrum, we could move the person having a smaller mass further from the fulcrum, we could move the mass, the person having the larger mass closer to the fulcrum, or we could do a combination of these options, resulting in an ideally balanced system. To determine where the fulcrum should be placed to create a balanced system, we need to consider a system of weights, W1, W2, W3, up through Wn, placed at positions X1, X2, X3, up through Xn, respectively, on a thin rod. We want to know where we should position C the fulcrum so that the rod does not have any turning, or in other words, torque is equal to zero. To do this, torque is equal to the sum of the products of the weights with the distances each position is from the fulcrum. So we've got W1 times X1 minus C, plus W2 times X2 minus C, plus W3 times X3 minus C, and so on up to Wn times Xn minus C. Knowing that weight is the product of the mass times acceleration, we're going to replace each weight with the respective mass times, the, times g, the uh, constant of acceleration due to gravity. And then I can uh, factor out that g, and I'm left with g times the sum of each mass times the distance each position is from c. If I set this equal to zero, I find out where torque is equal to zero. In other words, that there'd be no turning. And I'm going to be able to divide out g, and I'm going to be left with an expression. Now this expression, m sub 1 times x1 minus c plus m sub 2 times x2 minus c plus m sub 3 times x3 minus c plus uh, continuing up through m sub n times x sub n minus c. This is called the moment of the system about c. x sub k minus c is considered the sine distance from c. So if x sub k minus c is less than zero, that means that x sub k is to the left of c. So to continue to solve for c, I distribute each mass across x sub k minus c, and then I collect the product of the masses with the position, and I subtract c times the sum of the masses. And solving for c, I can add c times the sum of the masses to each side of the equation, and solving for c, I'm going to get a product of the masses times position divided by the mass of the system. And I call that numerator the moment of the system about the origin, and the denominator is the mass of the system. Now instead of c, I'm going to use notation of x bar as being the center of mass. So the center of mass for this system is the sum of the 
product of the masses times the position divided by the sum of the masses, and this is also called the mass weighted average of position. If I have uh, uh, points, point masses in a Cartesian plane, I proceed in a similar manner. Suppose I have a system of four point masses in the plane with masses of 2, 1, 4, and 5 kilograms resting at the following points negative 5, 7, 2, 4, 3, negative 2, and negative 4, negative 5, respectively. Each ordered pair having coordinates a, b gives the distance in centimeters a units from the y-axis and b units from the x-axis. We want to know where is the center of mass of the system. Well, the center of mass of the system is again going to proceed similar to what we did on the previous slide. We're going to take each mass times the position and then and add them and then divide by the mass of the system. So the 2, 1, 5, and 4 are the masses and we multiply the masses times the positions, the relative positions. So I have the sum of the masses times their positions divided by the sum of the masses, the mass of the system. Now to proceed I'm going to use, a, use vector arithmetic. So to proceed, I'm going to first begin with scalar multiplication. I'm going to multiply each mass times each respective coordinate, x and y coordinate. So I've got the pair negative 10, 14, the pair 2, 4, the pair 15, negative 10, and the pair negative 16, negative 20. And I'm going to sum those and divide by 12. Well, vector addition says that I can add the x coordinates and I can add the y coordinates. The fact that I'm dividing by 12 means that I'm multiplying the ordered pair negative 9, negative 12 by 1 12th. So this results in another application of scalar, scalar multiplication so that the center of mass of the four point mass system is given at negative 3 fourths, negative 1. So in other words, I could treat all of those, the, the system of four point masses instead as one mass of 12 kilograms resting at the point negative three-fourths, negative one. Now, what is really meant by mass-weighted average of position? Suppose I start with, instead of the four-point mass system, suppose I just start with the first two, with two kilograms resting at the point negative five, seven, and one kilogram resting at the point two, four. The center of mass of the two-point mass system is replaced by a single point with three kilograms resting at the point negative eight thirds six. And you'll notice that that point, that center of mass, it sits on the segment that connects those two points, negative five, seven, and two, four. If I add the third point mass, the third point mass at three negative two with five kilograms, I can replace that eight kilogram system with eight kilograms resting at the point seven eighths one. And again, that center of mass of the three-point system lies on the segment that connects negative eight-thirds six with three negative two. And finally, if I add in the fourth point mass, negative four, negative five, with four kilograms resting at that point, the whole 12 kilograms of that four-point mass system can be replaced at the point negative three-fourths, negative one. So what began as a system of four point masses can be replaced by a single point with 12 kilograms resting at the point negative, uh, resting at the point three fourths centimeter to the left of the y axis and one centimeter below the x axis. Now what happens if I have n point masses? Well, the center of mass of a system of n point masses is determined much the same way. I'm going to take the product of the masses with the position, so m1 times x1, y1, plus m2 times x2, y2, plus so on, up to m sub n times x sub n, y sub n, and divide by the mass of the system, which is just m1 plus m2 plus m3 up through m sub n. Again, I'm going to use some scalar multiplication. I'll multiply m sub k times x sub k, y sub k, I'll then add the x-coordinates and I'll add the y-coordinates, again dividing by the mass of the system. And I get that the x-coordinate 
for the mass, the center of mass is m sub 1, x sub 1, plus m sub 2, x sub 2, and so on up through m sub n, x sub n, all divided by the mass of the system. And the y coordinate of the center of mass is m sub 1, y sub 1, plus m sub 2, y sub 2, all the way up through m sub n, y sub n, divided by the mass of the system. And this is just written in another form using sigma notation. And I say that x bar, the x coordinate of the center of mass, is the moment about the y axis divided by the mass of the system. Now why is this called the moment about the y axis? Well, m sub y, the moment about the y axis, is given by the sum of the product of the masses and the x coordinate. It's called the moment about the y axis because I'm treating x sub k as the distance that mass is from the y axis. So m sub 1 is placed x sub 1 units from the y-axis. M, m sub 2 is placed x sub 2 units from the y-axis. x sub 3 is er, the m, m sub 3 is x sub 3 units from the y-axis. So when I'm considering the moment about the y-axis, I want to consider in a way the turning effect in relation to the y-axis. Where are these masses going to cause turning with respect to the y-axis? So that's why we call that the moment about the y-axis. y-bar, the y-coordinate of the center of mass, is calculated by taking the moment about the x-axis. So that's just simply the sum of the mass, the sum of the products of the masses times the y-coordinates, again divided by the sum of the masses. Now, Suppose we had the same coordinates as presented in the previous problem, negative 5, 7, 2, 4, 3, negative 2, and negative 4, negative 5. But the mass m placed at each position was the same. Where would the center of mass be? We could perform the same arithmetic and find that in the calculation m would cancel. So we would take the mass m times the position, sum those, and divide by the mass of the system. So it would be divided by 4m. And I'm going to see that the masses would cancel, and I'm simply left with the average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates. And anytime this happens, anytime an object has uniform density, the center of mass is the same as the centroid of the object, and the centroid is simply the geometric center of the object, so it, it doesn't take into account any mass because it's considered that the mass is the same and it's distributed the same across the object. So what are the important ideas from this video? Torque is the measure of the tendency of a system to rotate about a point. To find the point about which the system of endpoint masses will not turn is called the center of mass. We use vector arithmetic including scalar multiplication and vector addition to find the center of mass of a system of endpoint masses. The center of mass of a system of endpoint masses on an axis is determined by calculating the mass weighted average of position by taking uh, the sum of the product of the masses times the uh, position divided by uh, the sum of the masses, which is considered the mass of the system. If we have uh, endpoint masses in the Cartesian plane, we find the x and the y coordinates of the center of mass, where the x bar is the moment about the y-axis divided by the mass of the system, and y-bar is the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass of the system. And finally, the centroid is the geometric center of the object, and this, we, have, we have the centroid being the center of mass when the object has uniform density. In the next video, we'll continue these ideas and build on these ideas when we have a continuum uh, we have masses on a continuum, and we need to find the center of mass.